everyone, welcome back to Talkin Tech. If this is your first time here, my name is Tony, and this channel is here to provide tech reviews, tech news, and some tech tips sprinkled in along the way. Today, I'm going to go over my favorite features of CES 2019. Now, I, I picked these because I think they're the coolest and might lead to something cooler down the line. They might not be the most functional right now, but something that just these are these are things that just caught my eye right now. So I wanted to share them with you. Before we get started, I wanted to bring up my giveaway one last time. We have less than a week away. I will be picking two winners on January 18th, which is on Friday. So do not miss the opportunity to win a Google Home Mini. The link will be down in the description of this video, so you can join. There's no purchase necessary, anything of that nature. Getting started, first thing I want to cover is the Vive Pro i VR headset. Now the biggest advantage to this is it introduces what they're calling eye tracking. Now to kind of explain that a little bit, basically it knows where your eyes are looking and so it can, it can render that image finer so just the details you're looking at can, can render better and then the kind of the extraneous stuff can soften up a little bit which is kind of beneficial twofold. You know, obviously it increases your focus on that certain area and then it can kind of release some of the hardware demands, you know, for your PC, gaming console, whatever you'd be using it on. And that way it can kind of soften those and, and take away some of the hardware requirements. The next thing is it can actually get rid of having the need to have an external controller. Now the demo that I saw was with uh, MLB Home Run Derby and it allowed people to navigate menus with just their eyes. So just by looking up or down over, you know, whatever, that would cause it to select that menu item. And then that way you don't have to have a controller on the outside. Now I would assume also it would probably help you in a game, you know, looking. It kind of it kind of helps some of those nuances of real life. You know, let's say you're playing a racing game and you want to look slightly down at your gauges, but you don't want to necessarily move your head all the way down. You know, that kind of a thing. I'm assuming that would probably be beneficial as well. The next thing that is on the VR train is something called Holoride, which is a collaboration between Audi and Disney. They created another company, and I believe that they're both minority stakeholders in it. Um, what this is, is basically it creates a, a game out of your trip in a car. So for example, let's say you get in the car or your kids get in the car and you're driving from Minneapolis to Chicago. When you get in the car, you set that navigation system to Minneapolis to Chicago, that game length automatically adjusts to that distance. And so that game will last exactly the same length as that your trip is. So it's not like a movie where you might have a two hour movie and you only have an hour and a half trip while you don't finish the movie, you know. So this will allow you to space that whole thing out. Now the other benefit to this is it actually maps out what you're doing. So if your car stops, it'll put in real world intersections. Um, people, people crossing the street will look like objects on the uh, VR system. Take a right turn, take a left turn, that kind of a thing, accelerate. It'll actually be a part of the game, so it's an immersive experience. And one of the side benefits that I read about was it can actually lessen car sickness for people that have issues with tablets, you know, something like that. If you have your head down and something, you know, I know that I've gotten car sick a few times. So supposedly because the movements match in the game with what you're doing in real life, it actually is beneficial to, you know, the people with car sickness. The next thing I want to bring up that I think is really cool. And I think this has wider ranging implications than more than just what it's being used for right now. And that is the LG rollable OLED TV. So obviously the benefit to this is, is that you can store the TV in a little box, you know, kind of reminiscent of having a projector screen back in the day. I know that I grew up with um, a portable projector screen watching home movies of my parents back in the 50s and 60s. So I, I can kind of relate to that and I'm sure some of you can as well. So I think it's kind of cool. And the other benefit is to this is you know, you can kind of hide your TV in your living room, especially if you have a high-end home with nice design, something like that. You can have it roll up out of a box, and so you, your, your, your room doesn't have to be focused on the TV. I think it's a really cool idea, and I really think the advancement of the screen technology will come in handy in other areas, and, you know, we'll get to that in a second, but that's, that's the first one on that. The next item is the Royal FlexPi. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but... 
it, it what it is is a 7.8 inch touchscreen phone that folds from zero to 180 degrees. It is the first commercially available foldable smartphone. When it does fold, it does break down to three screens. It's got a front, back, and then an edge screen. I don't know exactly how that works with the OS. It's got Water OS, which is based on Android 9. They are pre-ordering right now, and its price range is right around $1,300 for the developer model, starting with 128 gigs of storage. Um, it is 1920 by 1440 resolution, so it is a 4 by 3 aspect ratio, but it is such a big screen. You know, it is, it is kind of that combination of a tablet, phone, and a PC. Now, I, I think it's a little bit of a gimmick today. However, I think going forward, it'll be, you know, one of those things, like I mentioned with the LG TV, I think it's got wider ranging implications than just what it's being used right now. With the gap narrowing between smartphone, tablet, and PCs, I think this will be one of those technologies that really kind of combines everything into one. Because all of a sudden you can carry around a bigger phone or bigger screen that's usable for more than just calling, texting, or you know, casual web browsing. Now all of a sudden you got an eight inch screen in your pocket, if not bigger, and you can kind of make it an all-in-one device, which I think is great for people on the move. So it'll be interesting to see how the technology evolves. I know Samsung's been talking about it, but it looks like they've been beat out. Speaking of Samsung, Samsung released their micro LED TV. And I think the biggest ranging implications of this, is you can, you can actually expand it. Now it sounded like you could just clip them on and I, I haven't seen the demo of how it all works, but it sounds really cool. Um, and to kind of explain micro LED for those of you that don't know, so it's basically millions of little LEDs that are individually lit. So you don't need any backlighting, you know, on your LCD TVs or your current LED TVs. The other benefit to this is it takes out, takes away the negatives of OLED screens and kind of keeps the benefits, the speeds, the color reproduction, the contrast ratio. The negatives would be off axis, color shifting, ghosting, burn-in, you know, those things of that nature. And the real big benefit obviously is like the contrast ratio because the OLEDs, the blacks are black and the brights are bright. It can be made extremely thin. And like I mentioned before, it is expandable. And again, I haven't seen that, so I don't know exactly how it works. I'm guessing it just kind of clips together. This can be created with very, very, very thin bezels, which is beneficial when you talk about the expandability capability that I brought up earlier. So I have a couple honorable mentions. The first is the NVIDIA GTX uh, 20, 20, 2080, 2070, 2060 series being uh, ported to laptops now. So now you can have that full gaming capability in your portable computer. And they mentioned that the ray tracing will be brought and it looks like it's going to be double the power of a PS4 Pro. So that's a big, that's a big upgrade for those of you that game. The next is actually two products, but it's kind of a standard, which is Wi-Fi 6 or 802.11ax. Um, we got two products here, or actually multiple products, but uh, two companies that I think exemplified this standard, which would be uh, TP-Link that came out with a new gaming router and a couple and like a mesh router, and then Netgear also came out with a mesh router. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with what 802.11ax or Wi-Fi 6 is. Basically, it'll give you one gigabit throughput on your wireless network throughout your home. Now, that's a big deal for somebody like myself who has gigabit already in their house, and I don't really get to take advantage of that full thing with my Wi-Fi. So that would be a benefit. And, you know, stating back to the benefits, older homes, they're going to benefit from this a lot because, you know, you're not going to have Cat6 run through your house. You're probably not going to pay for the expenses of doing it. Plus, the freedom of Wi-Fi is just great. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the best of CES 2019 for me. If you did, definitely smash that like button. If you haven't already, subscribe because I'll have weekly updates. Thanks for watching. Have yourself a great day.